Just waiting for things to come up here. Hopefully it'll be up soon. Okay. There we are. All right. How's everybody doing this morning? Hopefully everybody's uh, making it fine for the week. Should be an interesting study this morning. So good. Glad to hear some of you are doing good over there in the comments. Yeah, the bookshelves there. They're that's just actually some old shelving from our place in Bridgewater. I'm going to be fixing it up a little bit and. Uh, There'll be bookshelves. Hopefully, there's another section in here that goes in this way yet, and um, so we're getting there. I have my my desk I built is on the floor behind me. It's a real big desk, and I have to build a frame for that and everything. And that's going to go in first, and then there'll be there's another bookshelf right about here. This is just two bookshelves, but there will be another one right in here, and that'll be connected to the desk, and then it'll go that way. And then there'll be another shelf on that. See if I can point to it. This wall right here will be another uh, bookshelf. So, yeah. So, yep. It'd be nice to have my books here in the office. I feel a little bit disconnected right now. Because <laughs> if, if I'm here and I need to answer somebody, I have to think about which book it's in or what quote or whatever else and then I have to try to look it up when I go home and, and uh, everything so yeah they're just they're just sitting there right now they're not connected or anything else so I'll have to get those connected I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to put any kind of stain or finish on them or anything for now I might just leave them the way they are just natural like that um, yeah not the same without books in the background yeah well, we'll get there. We'll get back. So, books in the background and a red and black buffalo plaid shirt. Yeah, that's, that's my signature. <laughs> so, all right. Let me get the page thing up here. All right. Um, all right, we can start out with some prayer requests. Anytime anybody's ready, ready, we can uh, go ahead and start doing some prayer requests. I'll get a few of them jotted down. Okay. You know what? I'm gonna have to do this on uh, YouTube, I guess. Um, just give me a minute here. I, it's a little harder for me to do the copy and paste thing with my the Streamyard deal. All right, I'll go back up here. Okay. Um, OK. 
Okay. Okay, trying to get this whole thing uh, worked out here. Okay, stop the Shelly Francis. Um, all right, now we're at uh, JM Adventures. Um, hold on a second here. Okay, I'm just trying to do copy and paste of a lot of this stuff here. So, uh, so I'm getting uh, things here. Okay. All right. Back over to here. All right. Okay. All right, just trying to get everybody copied and pasted in here. A little bit easier than trying to write down everything. Um, all right, I have all of them so far, and I'm down to KJV Believer and uh, Chris and Evie. All right. Um, morning, Adam. Seeing your comment there. Is there any more prayer requests this morning? If so, then speak up. Christian ministry is a joke. Okay. See one of your comments there. Oh, okay, you're saying Christian ministry is a joke in the sense of most of the people out there. Gotcha. All right, I get it. Okay, I have your comment there, Ada.
So all right, prayer request for my unborn baby's health. I get that. There we go. All right. Okay, just do a few more here and then we'll we'll get started. Um Victor and then I'm starting to come in here. Ah. I have your your prayer request, uh, Shelly Francis. I I got that earlier. Um, okay, we will end with uh, Madison Tamayo. Um, all right. Um, okay. All right. I think we have everything that we're going to need here as far as prayer requests are concerned. So, um, let's, uh, go to the word and or go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, Let's uh, calm down over here in the comments as well. Let's, uh, it's time to pray. And then we're going to get into the preaching of God's word. So let's let's pray here. Dear Heavenly Father, I do pray, Lord, for um, a good time this morning in your word. I pray that we would all stay focused and attentive to the, the Bible and um, not have a lot of side conversations. And uh, just a bunch of requests, Lord, to bring before you this morning. We'll start out with Katrina Wadi and and uh, just the prayer request for protection in California with all the wildfires. And uh, uh, just a continued prayer that she would sell uh, for the selling of her mother's house there, that they would be able to get to a better place. Pray for that. I pray for um, All the stated in prayer requests to be also be added forth to the body of Christ. Many are maybe going through the same, but do not speak or may not know you. Uh, just the things that we all go through together, Lord, I guess, is what the prayer request is about. Um, this guy, the OTF Mexican, I'm lost. Uh, please pray for my soul. Help him to get things figured out. Um, I pray that your Holy Spirit would convict him of his sins and that he, and that he would know that he needs to be saved. Uh, Lotan Critchman. Uh, for his Jewish family members, I do pray for that. I pray that you give them chances to witness and that they would think about so their need for self, excuse me, salvation. For Anthony Tumanello, um, for his family to get saved, as well as his friend uh, Chris, um, the Jade E for the country and our leaders to turn to God. Um, I do pray for that, Lord. I pray that um, that we could lead a quiet and peaceable life. I do pray for that. Um, for Shelly Francis, that he needs a, a job very desperately. I do pray, Lord, that you would provide something for him, something where he could be a good witness for you, where he wouldn't have to compromise his beliefs and that he would really just, uh, that you would open up, up something for him. Um, I pray for JM Adventures, that uh, request for the largest wooden church building, St. Mary's Digby and Nova Scotia, to be demolished so that the community doesn't raise the funds necessary for rebuilding it. Um, Lord, I do pray for the destruction of these church buildings, and, and that one in particular. The Catholic churches are so vile and wicked and 
you know what's what goes on there, Lord. We don't have to tell you that. And I do pray that it would that they would not raise the money and and that it would be demolished. I pray for Luke Snyder, um, help with anger and being on pharmaceutical drugs, and video games, and he really wants to get out of the the city. Lord, I do pray for that. I pray, Lord, that uh, if there's a way that you could open up a door for him to get out of the city and get off the pharmaceutical drugs and away from video games, too, I pray uh, that you would make those things happen in his life. Um, for Charles Perillo, um, I pray that his says that his parents are having a very Catholic friend visit them this week. Um, please pray that I'm a good witness for Christ, praying for her salvation. Um, give him opportunities, Lord. Give him a clear mind. Um, I know that as soon as you start to witness to people, they usually get angry and things. And I just pray you'd help Charles to be calm in that situation and just uh, stay focused on the fact that they're a sinner. This woman is a sinner. And to keep it to that, I pray for Elizabeth James, uh, uterine and abdomen health issues, and where to move and find fellowship. And that's something I think a lot of people are going through right now, Lord, about finding fellowship, not just moving, but finding fellowship when they get there. Um, we all have a desire to really fellowship face to face, and we'll get to do that in heaven, Lord, but it's nice to have it down here, and I just pray for that. Um, for Aaron Deeren, uh, prayers for his health, and uh, just going through a lot, Lord, and I do pray that you would please heal him. And um, I pray for Dakota. Uh, get the chance to better witness to my mom's side of the family. Again, Lord, uh, witnessing the family, I just pray you give us all courage for that. Um, for Soul Baron, that uh, God puts on his heart to obey the instruction of my father. I've been disobedient in a few areas. Also pray that God empowers us to witness more and more boldly. And uh, again, Lord, we see that again. And um, also Aaron Deeren asked for prayer for finding fellowship nearby. I do pray for that. Um, uh, pray for uh, Brother Steve, Ministry of Truth. Um, that uh, prayer request for the young pervert who abused my daughter. Hopefully he gets a right mind. Um, I know your word says it's, that you're not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And I pray you would break that young man and um, destroy his pride and, and the wicked sin. I pray that you would convict him of that and that uh, he would actually get saved as a result. Uh, I pay, pray for Peter Sweeney um, to remain steadfast in the word while having boldness towards the lost. For all of us, Lord, on that one. Uh, KJV Believer. Um, we ask for prayer for a neighbor's salvation. Um, she says she does, doesn't need to be saved and for wisdom, discernment, and more sanctification and obedience. Um, very true, Lord. Again, I pray that you would break the, the self-righteous pride of their neighbor. For Chris and Evie, um, the division between friends of ours regarding the truth about COVID-19, some turned completely against us because we believe this is a scam. Um, that's happening across the board, Lord, and, and I pray that you would help us to be faithful as we're going to be talking about in the study today, and uh, to stand for truth no matter what it costs us. Ada Stepanova, Lord, pray for her that uh, to be able to move out of town to find, to find some affordable land. I pray for uh, the sister that's requested prayer for her unborn baby's health. Lord, I pray that you'd help her to understand the nutritional link to having a good, healthy baby, but um, that you would just be there to to uh, form that child in her womb and, and keep them healthy. Um, for uh, Matt, uh, the, uh, his pain that he struggles with on a daily basis, Lord, I pray you give him wisdom how to handle that. And, and uh, if there's anything he can do that would uh, ease that pain, but just get him through those times, Lord. And um, Chris Vault for a prayer request for pancreatitis. Again, Lord, give him wisdom um, in terms of how to heal that and and uh, just to get them through that uh, sickness there. Um, Papa Prez, prayers for family to come back to the Lord and my type 1 diabetes. Again, Lord, another prayer for uh, 
family members to get saved and uh, some sickness that they have there, Lord. I do pray that you give them wisdom how to heal that. Um, Victor, a prayer request for epilepsy. I do pray for that as well, Lord. Um, a lot of sickness, a lot of things going on, Lord. And, and I just pray that you would please help them to get through that um, and find ways to cure it. Uh, and I pray for uh, Madison Tamayo. Uh, prayers for family again, Lord. And they're stuck in the church building, and uh, they don't rightly divide in. They're into this super patriotic stuff, Lord, with supporting a lot of what's going on with the country. And I just pray, Lord, again, that you would help them to realize that this nation is going down and it's going to go down very hard, and that uh, uh, patriotism won't bring it back, but repentance. Um, is what's needed for this nation. And I just pray, Lord, that you would now just open our minds to your word, help us to stay focused on the scriptures. And uh, I ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. We're going to be talking today about a call to faithfulness. So let me close this thing down here and and uh, as always, stay focused on the scriptures. I want you to turn in your King James Bible, get your Bible, and um, trying to close some things down here. Um, you need to read the scriptures. This is your authority. I always say that King James Bible is your authority. And that's why um, don't just come here for entertainment or something like that. Um, fellowship can be done afterward. Um, but right now we're going to be studying the Word of God. So get your King James Bible out and we're going to be looking up um, some scriptures on a very interesting subject. About a call to faithfulness. I was going to do this outside. I, I really wanted to. I, I like to do these. I did, you know, the call to righteousness, a call to sobriety, a call to holiness. And I like to do them outdoors. But uh, just right now, it's just a lot going on with moving in here and everything else. So um, I was actually going to record this a week or so ago, but just couldn't get it done. And so I thought, well, might as well just do this for Sunday morning because it's a really good study. And, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of times that we mess up as Christians. And... You know, you can you can really get, you know, off away from the Lord. You get away from the Bible. You put it down for a few days. You, you start listening to the wrong kind of music or watch the wrong kind of videos or whatever else. And, you know, you have to repent of that. You can't just say, well, it's no big deal. You know, it's, it doesn't really matter. Um, no, we're, we're called to be faithful. OK, another way of saying faithful would be loyal. Um, God expects that's that out of us. Uh, when he saves you, you are his purchased possession, and um, you owe him your life. And that faithfulness that's supposed to be there is very, very important. And we're going to see that in the study today. So let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Turn your Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. You mess around in sin. Um, you know, you're you're failing, you're you know letting your flesh you know take over essentially. But uh, you can get that, you know, repent of it and, and say I'm sorry, Lord, and, and get it forgiven and stay faithful to the Lord. Let's start out here. First Corinthians chapter four, verse one. Let a man so account of us as 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 of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. It's a requirement. And you say, well, that's just a preacher. Uh, no, it's it's anybody who's saved. We have been given the ministry of reconciliation. Um, if God saved you, he expects you to witness for him. And that doesn't mean you have to be out there. You get 20 people saved each week or something like that. No, that's, that's not there. Um, it just, you're to be faithful. Okay, um, Noah was a preacher of righteousness. 
And how many people did he get saved? Okay, eight people were saved, including Noah. So seven, seven members of his own family. It's not very successful in terms of uh, soul winning. And yet uh, he was a faithful preacher. Why? Well, because his heart was right with God and he saw the evil and he said, I'm not going to have any part of that. Um, be encouraged, brethren. You say, well, I haven't led too many people to the Lord, or maybe not any people to the Lord. Are you faithful? The Lord shows you some kind of a mystery and some, some kind of a uh, what the Bible teaches, and you learn the truth of God's word. Um, God expects you to be faithful with that. And, you know, that's not the easiest thing to do because you get around families and, and things and, and people that you do care about, but they're lost. They'll try to get you to back down. They'll try to be, get you to be unfaithful, like a, a saved wife that goes and hangs out with her lost former friends, you know, and then say, hey, that guy over there is trying to make eyes at you. Maybe you ought to, you know, go hang out with that guy or something, you know. What are they trying to do? Get you to be unfaithful to your husband. Well, in a spiritual sense, we are betrothed to Jesus Christ. And the devil, the favorite thing he can do to you as a Christian is to get you to be unfaithful to the Lord, to cheat on the Lord, so to speak. But we're required to be faithful. It's not a suggestion. Hey, you ought to try to be faithful if you can. No, it's required. Required. It's a requirement. Okay. Jump down to verse 17 there in 1 Corinthians chapter 4. For this cause have I sent unto you Timotheus, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways which be in Christ as I teach everywhere in every church. He's faithful. He's recommending Timothy. All right. Um, do you feel like you could be recommended by somebody like Paul? It's a challenge, you know. And we'll see this thing again in a little while when we get to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2. The thing of, of things that, you know, somebody who's faithful, you know, committing truth to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. We should all be considered faithful. Next, let's go to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. It says here, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Now, don't tell me there again if you want to say, well, you know, 1 Corinthians 4 was just to ministers. You know, well, he's writing here to a church. They're all supposed to be faithful. Verse 2, grace be to you in peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. You get God's grace when you're faithful. Okay? If you're perpetually just messing up and mess, messing up and messing up, um, well, you might still be saved. I'm not going to say you have to be sinlessly perfect, obviously. Um, you will struggle with sin, sure. But uh, if you're not being real faithful to the Lord, you're not going to get much of his grace. God resist, resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. You're supposed to humble yourself when you mess up. Say, God, I'm sorry. I can't believe I did that. Boy, I'm so stupid. You know, don't say, well, you know, it wasn't really my fault. I mean, after all, you know, that person over there, I think it was really their fault or whatever. Humble yourself. Be faithful. Admit to your faults. Colossians chapter 1. Let's go there. Keep turning towards the back of your Bible. You go through Philippians and then to Colossians. Colossians chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God and Timotheus, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, we see him writing to a church, people that are there at Colossae, the faithful brethren. How many uh, of these modern churches are faithful? Most of the church buildings that are out there, they've uh, caved into the, using the new versions or they're, 
they're uh, using new music or whatever else. They're not faithful. They don't hold on to the things that they've learned. No, it's, hey, ever-changing. What do we have to do to get new people in? Like the one sign, the Baptist Church up in Bridgewater where our office used to be. They had that sign. I think we made a video about it. Excuse me. And it said, what does this sign need to say to get you to come here? That's not being faithful, right? That's being compromising. Somebody saying, hey, I'll do whatever I have to do, whatever it takes to get people in. I remember uh, Rick Warren. I heard him the one time, that wicked prosperity preacher out in California, I think he is, and a uh, big mega church pastor, you know, 40 days of purpose, nut, uh, member of the Council on Foreign Relations. But uh, yeah. And, and he said the one time he said about, you know, whatever it takes, are you willing to say whatever it takes? I'll do whatever it takes to get people into church. That's not being faithful. OK, that's being unfaithful to the Lord. Go next to First Timothy, chapter one. When you're faithful, you, uh, you take certain stands and then you don't back down. You know, when I got married, I. Uh, basically pledged to my wife that I would be faithful to her. I would love her from then on. And uh, well, I kind of loved her for a while. And then I kind of did go with that other woman for a while, but then I'm back again. Would that make me a faithful husband? No. You say, well, you wouldn't do that. Of course not. I wouldn't do that to my wife. I wouldn't cheat on her or anything, but uh, how many times have we cheated on the Lord? How many times have we kept our mouth shut when we shouldn't have? We should have spoken up. Hmm. First Timothy chapter one, verse 12. And I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who hath enabled me for that. He counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Um, God will choose you. If he wants you in ministry, by the way. Um, going full-time in ministry is not an easy task. It's not something that's just a fun, oh, that's kind of neat. I've enjoyed it ever since. You see these pastors, and I just, I love being in ministry. Um, I'm sorry, you know, they're probably pretty fake if they're saying that they love being in ministry. Ministry is a rough thing, okay? It's it's kind of a, a, some guy goes into war, and he's being shot at whenever he's put on the front lines of the battle, and you say, you know, do you love being a soldier? And, you know, uh, well, I'm a soldier. I'm here to fight and, and whatever, but I don't really love it. There's a lot more I'd rather do. Well, that's kind of a picture of a preacher. But if the Lord counts you faithful, he says, hey, that guy sticks with me. All right. Put him in the ministry. Verse 13. Who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly and unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation, not just the preachers. In other words, all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. You will remember your sins. You will remember the, the stupid things that you did. And, you know, you shouldn't dwell on that stuff and just constantly doubt your salvation or something. That's that's not the point of it. But you have to remember that you're still a sinner when you get saved. And particularly when you are in ministry full time, you have to remember the dumb things that you did. You can't get so high and lofty that you think, oh, somebody messed up. And, and so, you know, I can just, you know, nail them. You have to remember those things. And. uh that's a, it's a challenge. It really is a challenge because you have to remember it, but yet you can't fall into those sins. You can't get too close to a sinner and say, you know, let me put my arm around you and then realize that you're sitting in the bar with them or something. If I can say it that way, you still have to maintain a distance of I'm not going to go and get involved in that stuff anymore. Well, you used to be these things. You used to be a, a blasphemer and a persecutor and in, an injurious yeah, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorant, ignorantly in unbelief. You see? So, you know, being faithful doesn't mean that you have a perfect spotless record and you've never done anything wrong. That's not it. It's you remember that you're a sinner, but you learn how to fight that sin. You get victory over that sin so that you can be there to say to the drunkard, hey, here's how you get away from 
drunkenness. Hey, pornographer, sex pervert, here's how you get away from that stuff. Let me give you the advice because I've been through it myself. And it's not just, well, I, I kind of got rid of it and I went back and then I kind of got rid of it and then I went back. You need to be faithful. And when God sees faithfulness in your life, especially as a man, he's going to say, okay, I'm going to consider you for ministry. But uh, he's not going to consider you for ministry if you're not faithful. He said, well, I know lots of preachers that are in ministry and they're not faithful. That's because they put themselves in. They go off to their Bible college someplace and they get their degree or whatever else. And they can get into ministry. They can get into a church and they have a nice little pension and all the other stuff. They put themselves in there. God didn't choose them. Something to think about there. Turn next to 1 Timothy chapter 3. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 8. Speaking of ministry. Likewise must the deacons be grave, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy of filthy lucre. We'll stop there. Go through these. Be grave. or sober. They're serious. Don't act like a fool. Okay? Um, I mean, it doesn't mean that you can't laugh or can't smile or whatever. It's just that you need to be serious about things. Not double tongued. Oh, hi, brother. Oh, it's so good to see you here, brother. Did you hear about the brother so and so? Yeah. Oh, hello, brother. You know, double tongued. You're a hypocrite. One minute you're blessing a brother, and the next minute you're stabbing him in the back with other people. You're not supposed to be double tongued. Not given to much wine. You can't be a, a heavy drinker, all right? Um, I don't believe the Bible is against drinking any wine, uh, total just complete temperance or whatever else. But uh, if you have a problem, you need to be that way. You know, if you if you get drunk occasionally or, or if you've done that in the past, then stay away from alcohol for any reason. Um, but if it's a it's you know again understanding what wine was in the Bible times, it's it's not. You know exactly what we have today. If you go to an alcohol store or whatever else, a lot of that stuff has synthetic compounds in it and whatever. But uh, you know the stuff in the past would have been healthier, fermented grape juice. But uh, now they put all kinds of other chemicals in. But uh, you don't want to get somebody who's in ministry being given to much wine. It's not a good idea. If they get drunk or or a little bit too. You know, maybe not fully drunk, but just a little bit too much wine. That's a problem. Why? Because it can lead to unfaithfulness. Not greedy of filthy lucre. There's a lot of ways when you get into ministry that you can make more money by avoiding certain topics and talking about others. Uh, other topics, I'm saying. Um, it's a problem. You can't be greedy of filthy lucre. Verse 9. Holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. What does that mean? Holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. I know I haven't backed off on this King James Bible. My heart, in my heart, I know that this is God's book. I'm not ever going to say, hey, uh, you know, this book here, uh, it, well, it's, it's, it's a good translation, but it's not a perfect translation. Not happening. Um, the things the Lord has showed me, I'm not going to back down on those. Um, why? I want to be found faithful. And you say, well, you know, that's for a preacher. Well, yeah, this is, this is well, not a preacher here in the context. It's talking about a deacon, but instruction and righteousness, brethren, we all need to be faithful. Don't back down. You say, well, I get along with my family better. I, you know, there's, you know, if I bring up the King James only issue or, or if I bring up, you know, the catching up before the time of Jacob's trouble or coronavirus is a scam or whatever else, it, it can lead to division. It might lead to division, but uh, can you remain faithful if you stop talking about the truth? Verse 10, and let these also first be proved. Then let them use the office of a deacon being found blameless. You know, the Bible has some pretty high standards. And people are so quick to just say, well, you know, we nobody can be perfect. And, and, and you know, they try to knock it down. And, you know. But you're supposed to be proved when you're in ministry. There's supposed to be a, an approval process there. Very important. You're to be found faithful. Okay, found blameless in the text here, but 
blameless. We'll continue here. Verse 11. Even so must their wives be grave, not slanderers, sober, faithful in all things. Again, we see the thing of being faithful there. Let the deacons be the husband of one wife, ruling their children and their own house as well. For they that have used the office of a deacon, well purchased to themselves a good degree and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. You want to have boldness in the faith? You know how you have it? Be found faithful. Don't back down on the things that you've learned, the things that the Lord has showed you. Be found faithful. I'm not going to quit on this. I'm going to be loyal to the Lord. I'm going to be faithful. It's very important. But remember verse 12, ruling their children and their own house as well. Okay? We'll get back to the thing of children here in a little bit. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 2. You, know, you, you want to get into full-time ministry, you need some years behind you. Um, don't get in. Don't think that you can get into it when you're young, in your 20s, and whatever else. You know, well, I've been saved for a while, and I've learned the Bible. Yeah, but you need to learn some things about life. Okay. Second Timothy chapter two, verses one through two. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to just any man. Doesn't matter. As long as they say that they're saved, you know, that's all that matters. Let's not make problems. No, it doesn't say that. It says faithful men. The approval process needs to be there. Is this guy a fake? Is he a fraud? How's he doing? What are his beliefs? Watch these people. See? Who shall be able to teach others also? Bible says there. Um, again, the thing of being faithful. Uh, you watch somebody for years and years, and they're and they're just sticking by the word, and they they just they're not changing. They just stand for the truth and without apology, and they're just there. And you watch them get kicked, you watch them get knocked down, and just they stay with it. Why? Faithful are there. And again, you know the. One of the big things in the scriptures, and I didn't go into this, um, but God is faithful. And you'll see that time and time again. I mean, you know, can you even, or you or I even fathom, all of a sudden the Lord changes? And he says, you know, actually, uh, I think I'm just going to send anybody with uh, brown hair to hell. You know, <laughs> no, God's not going to do that. God is faithful. You can always count on the Lord. You can always count on his word. His word doesn't change in spite of what all the weirdos think with the Mandela effect. <laughs> okay. The Bible doesn't change. All right. The new versions try to change the word of God, but the King James Bible, there it is. Faithful. It's worked for the people in the past. It works today. Next, let, next let's go to uh, Titus chapter one. Titus chapter 1, verse 6. Next book over. Going back, close back to your Bible. Book of Titus chapter 1 and verse 6. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly. I can't tell you how many times I've seen, you know, pastors in church buildings fail that one. I mean, they're some of the, the, the pastor kids. You know, that I've run into over the years being raised in the whole church building system. There are some of the most vile, wicked little devils out there. I mean, this uh, one church I was going to, a Baptist church I used to go to, and, and um, this the guy that would, uh, he would lead singing and he'd do the special music. And he wasn't a pastor per se, but he was, you know, kind of in ministry there. They had this little boy, and the little boy would run around the congregation with a screwdriver, you know, just running, you know, and stuff. And, he go up front and the one time he was grabbing hymn books and he was throwing them and things. Little boy about probably about my son's age, maybe a little bit younger. And it was just, oh, stop that. You know, please stop that. You know, I'm going to talk to you. You know, boy didn't need a talking to. <laughs> Needed something else. Um, Need a good spanking is what I'm saying. Um, but unruly. 
And I, and you know, like I said, I have seen pastors that the, the children were not uh, good children. And you say, well, that's not the pastor's fault. It's the child has a, their own free will. Um, no, when a child is, is unfaithful and unruly, it's because the parent is, is giving them an avenue to, to bring that into their life. Whether it's too much sugar, which is not good. You know, if you're giving them, you know, blue raspberry pixie sticks or something, you know, uh, it's not going to help them, you know, uh, or cartoons or video games or, you know, public school and whatever else. I mean, you, you mess a child up with that stuff. Um, it goes back to the pastor. It goes back to the, the parents there. And I know that there's, you know, saved people that are married to a lost you know, husband or lost wife, depending on what you are. And, and it's hard to, to get control of your child when, you know, the, the parent, you know, your husband or wife is constantly fighting you. I, I get that. I understand. But, you know, do what you can. And you get into ministry, especially you have to have faithful children. And I, I'm constantly on my son just making sure, you know, teaching him what I can. And there's certain things he's just not allowed to do. And he knows better than to cause a scene at a store. He knows that that doesn't work. That That's instant trouble, you know, when he, if he does that. So, and, and all the time, I, I thank the Lord for my son because, you know, we'll go to a store and people will just come up and say, my word, he's such a good boy, you know. And um, I remember the one time just not long ago and, um, and I was at the town office here and, and getting some things done and, and we went to leave and we walked out and, and the one woman that was working there, she said, I didn't even know his son was there. He was just so quiet the whole time. I, I didn't even know he was standing there, you know, so praise the Lord for that. But uh, children are be faithful. So it isn't just, you know, well, it's just the, the faithful thing is just for guys that are in ministry, just for men in ministry. They're the only ones that have to be faithful. No, the church has to be faithful. Oh, well, OK, the church has to be faithful, but my children can run around like wild savages or something. No, no. Children are to be faithful. Very important. Um, verse 7. For a bishop must be blameless. You see it there again. As the steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not give, given to filthy lucre, but a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate, holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. How can you hold fast the faithful word when you don't even believe in the book that you're preaching out of? I've said that for years and years. <clears throat> a lot of these guys, and I've confirmed them. I've talked to them face to face. I'm not at all afraid of these pastors, these hirelings. But these guys, they'll say, well, you know, this is the word of God. The word of God tells us today, friends, and they'll make a good living off the book. But then you corner them and you say, is it perfect? Well, it's a translation. It can't be perfect. Well, that's a problem because there's translations in the original autographs, you know, and they were inspired of God and perfect. So that's kind of an issue. But um, but they'll correct it with the Greek. They'll correct it with the Hebrew. And you get behind closed doors and you say, uh, would you kick somebody out for using a new version? No, that's up to them. They can use anything they want. I'm, I'm not going to divide over that. They're not holding fast the faithful word. They're just simply not. And how many of these preachers out there? Any country where you're in, wherever you're at, how many preachers out there hold faith, fast the faithful word as they've been taught? Many of them, they come out of seminary and they, they'll, they'll, oh, there's some new movement. And they go with that. and Oh, this brings in more people to the church. Oh, I'll go with that. Well, that kind of goes against what you were taught. Well, sure, but, you know, that's just kind of back there. I'll go with this. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Next, let's go to Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3, verse 7. That being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works, these things are good and profitable unto men. 
I, that's been one of the weirdest things for me over the years. You know, I preach against certain sins and I say, you need to stop doing this or that and, and whatever else. And, and people get mad. Oh, Denlinger's backloading uh, works into salvation. Denlinger's a work salvationist. He's a lordship salvationist. He's this, he's that. Don't you understand good works are good for you? They're profitable. You know, um, don't you understand I'm trying to improve your life? No, I'd rather just justify my sin and live here in the filthy cesspool of sin and call myself saved. Why? You know, you, you like struggling with, with uh, marriage problems and with pornography and movies and rock music and, and you know, drunk junk food and drunkenness and, you know, name the thing and, and whatever else out there. You, you, you like messing with that stuff? It's good for you? No, it isn't. I'm trying to help you out of that stuff. But again, you see there, being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying. Isn't it a wonderful, wonderful thing to know that we have, we're supposed to be faithful, but then we have, like I said earlier, the Lord is faithful to us. And he says, justified by his grace. We're not justified by, well, I, I believe now. I, I used to call upon God. But I used to, you know, trusting in my asking, but now I believe in my mind that I'm saved, therefore I am. Okay. Um, and I've talked to some of these, you know, followers of Robert Breaker, and they'll say, you know, well, I was always confused about salvation. And then Robert Breaker straightened me out, and he told me that I'm saved just by believing, so now I have peace because I believe in what Robert Breaker said. I said, okay, um, did God save you or did you save yourself? See, if it's your belief, then it's your action up here. It's all up there in your mind. Um, did God save you? How do you know he saved you? Did you ask him? Hmm. New thought there. God's grace. Being justified by our grace, our faith. My faith. No, it's his grace. We should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Heirs. Join heirs with Jesus Christ. I mean, you talk about an inheritance. You talk about some good things to look forward to. An eternal life. No matter how bad it gets down here on this earth, we have to remain faithful. Okay? This is a faithful saying. Very important to get that. Just keep that in mind. Now let's go to Revelation chapter 2. We can see the stuff there written to a Christian, but let's go for some instruction and in righteousness here. Revelation chapter 2, verse 8 through 11. And here's where it gets kind of rough because of what's going on in the world and what could be coming. I'm sorry if I'm a little bit out of it right now. I had a really weird night of sleep. I had a really bizarre dream about a lot of Christians being killed in the not too distant future. Um, it was, it shook me up pretty bad. I was up pretty much since two o'clock this morning. So I'm a little bit off just to have some grace for me. Um, I don't even want to get into the dream. It was a bad dream, but, uh, ties in with a scripture here. Revelation chapter two, verse eight. And under the angel of the church in Smyrna write, these things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Any papist that believes in replacement theology, in other words. Fear none of these things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. Now there's a lot of debate who this is written to. You say, well, churches, it has to be the church age. Well, yeah, but you get into some of the things that are going on to these seven churches, and it doesn't really line up with Pauline epistles, the doctrine that we have. Um, I would, I lean more towards this as church, churches that are in the time of Jacob's trouble, uh, end time churches and things. But uh, we're seeing this stuff coming. Okay, we're seeing it. The devil shall cast some of you into prison. Have you had the vaccine for coronavirus? Oh, you're, re you're refusing. Well, then you're going to be a public safety health hazard. So um, we might have to put you in prison for that. Could you see it coming? 
I mean, I literally heard from a sister this week over in Australia and she said that she went to the grocery store, her and her mother, and and uh, she they wouldn't wear, wear masks. And all of a sudden the police came and literally physically, you know, forcibly removed them from the store, humiliated them, searched them, and all because they weren't wearing a mask. It just just disgusting. She remained faithful through it, but uh, it was it was a humiliating experience. Well, it's just going to keep getting worse. Um, you know, I was kind of hoping that they'd back off on this whole thing, and just because they're seeing so much pushback, but it seems like they're going to try to double down. You know, the the whatever you want to call them out there, the the Goonies, or whatever. It just seems like they're really pushing their agenda hard now. And, you know, forcibly wearing masks and, and things like this, which don't even work. It's it's a joke. You know, like I, I said in one of the other things I did live streams, you know, up here in northern Maine, where I'm located, um, there's been, you know, one death in the county over this way, five deaths in the county where I'm at, because there's a big city, Bangor, in the south part of Penobscot County and Piscataquas County, which is over to the west of us. There's been zero deaths. From coronavirus but everybody has to wear masks it's 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 an opposition of science falsely so called and yet they're get they're forcing this thing and of course you can see it heading into the thing of a forced vaccination you can see this whole thing coming and you find out what's in these vaccinations it's terrible could we be cast into prison in the future well they were cast into prison in the first century the apostles well, you know, they were probably fooling around, so God didn't protect them. No, they weren't fooling around. They were doing what the Lord told them to do, and they were cast into prison. Bad things were happening to them. Ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death. Not faithful until the time that you get released and you come out on bond. And you, It can get to the point where we get killed for what we have to stand up for. More and more censor, censorship is happening all the time on YouTube and, and online and everything. I mean, the all the stuff that's coming, I mean, it, you can see it. It could get pretty rough. But here's the question. Are you going to be faithful to the Lord? Or are you going to quit and say, well, you know, I, I have a job to think about. I have my family to think about. And, okay, I don't exactly have to deny Jesus Christ here, but um, I'll just kind of go along with the system. More people go along with the system, they're going to just ratchet up more control. I mean, they've already shut the church buildings down, which the church buildings aren't, you know, founded in Scripture. Nobody had church buildings in the New Testament. You know, we understand that. But they've already told the churches, you don't have authority. Every church building out there should have stayed open. They should have said, hey, you, you can't tell us what to do. This is wrong. You know, we believe in separation of church and state. But, of course, they couldn't do that because they're, incorporated churches and they're run by cowards so those pastors weren't faithful something to think about next let's go to psalm 5 back in the old testament psalm 5 You know, and, and you say, well, brother, I've really messed up. I've, I've, I haven't been very faithful to the Lord. I've, I've really um, failed the Lord quite a few times. Okay, then restart. Start over today. Be faithful. All right? That's a challenge to myself. There's been times I've failed the Lord. But we all need to have a call to faithfulness. Psalm 5, beginning in verse 7. But as for me... I will come into thy house in the multitude of thy mercy, and in thy fear will I worship toward thy holy temple. Don't have a holy temple today other than your body, but you understand here, instruction and righteousness. Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of mine enemies. Make thy way straight before my face, for there is no faith, faithfulness in their mouth. We'll come back to that. Their inward part is very wickedness. Their throat is an open sepulcher. They flatter with their tongue. Destroy them, O God. Destroy thou them, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions, for they have rebelled against thee. 
But let all that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy, because thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. For thou, Lord, wilt bless the righteous. With favor wilt thou compass him as with a shield. Boy, do we need that right now. I read that and I just thought, wow. What's it say in Ephesians chapter 5? Speaking to yourselves in Psalms. Let's let that be our prayer. There is no faithfulness in their mouth. Oh, the coronavirus is, is uh, it's very infectious and the signs are headache and fever and sore throat. And Oh, wait, no. Um, there's no symptoms. Masks aren't effective. Oh, wait, yes, they are. Um, you need to spray disinfectant on everything that people touch because it can be, coronavirus can be transmitted through touching. Oh, wait. CDC comes out this past week. Uh, no, it's actually not contagious in that matter. There's no faithfulness in their mouth. You never know what they're going to say next. Do we need lockdown? Okay, we can go out back again. Oh, we might need to lock down again. Coronavirus will be gone by the summer. We need 30 days to flatten the curve. Oh, wait. Uh, it's probably never going to go away. There's no faithfulness with these people. You can't trust them. You can't put your trust in the political leaders. Oh, if we can just, just get Trump in for 2020, just Donald Trump in for 2020, you're out of your mind. He isn't going to do anything. Look what he's already done to the country. He said, well, then you're for Joe Biden? No, I'm not for politicians. I'm for Jesus Christ. Their inward part is very wickedness. You know what these people want? The, the leaders that are subservient to the Vatican, because you look at them, they all are. Um, they want to kill people. They want massive death in their own country because they're international globalists. Be they socialist, fascist, you know, whatever communist, whatever their supposed ideology is, um, they're all on the same team in the sense of they want to kill people. Their inward part is very wickedness. Their throat is an open sepulcher. Funny because the Lord said that about the Pharisees, the religious men of his day. Their throat is an open sepulcher. They flatter with their tongue. Oh, boy. Boy, that Donald Trump, I, I like him. Boy, have you heard his speeches? Make America great again. Wouldn't it be nice to have America be great again? What are they doing? Flattering with the tongue. They don't mean it. Donald Trump, this is the best economy ever. You are a lying devil. It's not the best economy ever. It's the worst. Okay, they're, they're printing up all kinds of money. Been printing up tens of, of trillions of dollars, you know, since the time he got into uh, office and whatever else, just I shouldn't say tens of trillions, but tens of billions of dollars, uh, just money, money, money to try and keep the economy going. They're having to send stimulus checks out to people just to keep them so that they can survive. That's not a good economy, right? And you can go over all kinds of other proofs. It's terrible what's happening right now. Oh, but uh, he flatters good with the tongue, doesn't he? What are you trying to say, your brother Brian? I'm trying to tell you. Uh, you better not put your faith in men. You better not put your faith in, in the upcoming presidential election that things will get better and whatever else. Um, people need to get down on their knees and ask God to forgive them and ask God to, 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 to you know, Lord, please, uh, please judge the wicked. I mean, look, look what it says. Verse 10, destroy thou them, O God, let them fall by their own counsels. Yeah. I hope the Lord shuts up the mouths of, of these Jesuits like Fauci and, and Redfield and whatever else, these, these lying devils that just keep coming out. I hope the Lord drops them dead. You know, if they want to get saved, hey, praise the Lord, that'd be even better. But if not, stop their lying mouths. They're hurting people. They're going to destroy millions and millions of lives. You know, I hope the Lord destroys them. I really do. Like I said, I, hey, they get saved. Turn against that stuff, come out and say, I was a liar, and I didn't tell what they were part of. Praise the Lord, that'd be even better. But if not, send them to hell. They're, they're horrible people. Cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions, for they have rebelled against thee. I mean, what right does any politician have to tell people you can't go worship the Lord? They have no right to do that. None. Politicians, you read Romans 13, they're there to, to, to punish the evildoers and to praise those that do well, not quarantine them. You need to stop listening to these people and fearing these people. 
We need to be saying, Lord, I pray you destroy these wicked people. That's what we need to pray. Verse 11, but let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy because thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. For thou, Lord, wilt bless the righteous. Remember the other study, a call to righteousness? With favor wilt thou compass him as with a shield. Like I said, man, we need that so bad. Lord, defend me. Protect me. The Lord says, why should I? You haven't given up the TV yet. You haven't given up the smoking yet. You haven't given up the pornography, the drugs, the whatever. Name it. Pick your poison, so to speak. Um, but you give that stuff up. You say, Lord, tell me what to do. Hey, uh, Lord, is uh, excuse us as an example. This little eraser here, Lord, is this pleasing in your sight? Lord says, no. You say, okay. Drop it. What's next, Lord? Lord says, hey, that music you're listening to, I, I, I don't really approve of that. Done. Snap the CD in half or delete it. <laughs> MP3 file. <laughs> Gone. What's next, Lord? I want to be righteous. I want you to compass me like with a shield. I want you to defend me, Lord. When I go out there in the public and, and they're saying you need to put on the mask, you need to, and it's eventually going to be you need to be vaccinated. Lord, I, I want to be defended by you. And Lord, if it's my time to go, if it's if it's my time to die, then help me to be faithful unto death. Help me to stand firm. If they say, uh, you're going to lose your job. A lot of you have written about that. Hey, you put this mask on. Hey, you're going to be vaccinated. Hey, you're going to this or that. And you say, I, I can't do that. Why not? I'm a Christian, and I believe the Bible goes against what you're telling me to do, and I can't do it. I will be faithful to my God, and if God allows you to fire me, then okay. The Lord will provide. What would you do if the uh, grocery store said that uh, in the future, you're not allowed to come here unless you're vaccinated? You have to have a little card that says that you've been vaccinated. What are you going to do? Are you going to be faithful? We're going to make excuses and say, well, you know, OK, uh, you know. We have an opportunity, it's opportunity to stand right now against something so dumb as a face mask. Um, they're telling you to do something with your body. That should enrage you. That should make you angry. Hey, that's a this is a medical device that you're telling me a medical device. You're telling me I need a medical device. I'm not sick. And if I do get sick, I'll trust the Lord to heal me, number one. You know, and it's not even deadly. You know, 90 something percent. It's always numbers changing. So 90 something percent of the people that get the coronavirus thing, they get better. So you're trying to in, enforce something on me that is in direct violation with the scriptures. I'm not doing it. I will be faithful. They say, well, you're going to go to prison. Then I'll be faithful until prison. Cast me into prison. I'm going to be faithful. Well, uh, we might have to execute you as an enemy of the state. Then I'll be faithful unto death. I pray you take heed to this sermon. You know, I, I'm. The Lord only knows. Are we going to? Is there going to be a pushback? There is a pushback right now. I get it. There's a lot of protests. A lot of people saying, "Hey, we're not doing the mask. Hey, we're this." open the economy up we need to impeach these people and whatever else but uh, none of it's going to mean anything not anything until people start to repent of their sin until they start to come to the lord and say god i'm sorry you know you can you know we're going to make america great again by having donald trump in a second time <laughs> it's not happening it's not happening um so what do you do well like i said you remain faithful I have to drive that point home because it's something that we all have to remember. And um, Psalm 5, 7 through 12, remember that as well. Um, if you can get away from harm's way, if you can get out into the country someplace and, and you know find another source for food or whatever you have to do. Um, but if you're going to say, I can't get out of the city, brother, I'm, I'm just going to be stuck in here. Then remain faithful no matter what. If it sends you to prison, 
Okay. Um, if it causes you to be killed eventually. All right. I saw somebody posted a video or something, somebody in the comments, and it was some Black Lives Matter group, and they were had this woman on a park bench or something, and they're yelling at her. They're going like this with their hands, and they're saying, are you a Christian? Are you a Christian? You know, screaming at her. And I, don't, I couldn't hear what she was saying. I couldn't hear if she was answering yes or no. But uh, what if that happens? A whole gr a mob of people, and you know that they're going to beat you to death. You're going to be faithful? I certainly hope so. So that's going to be it for today's study. Let's close with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I do pray that we would all be faithful. I pray that you would convict us, Lord, when we do wrong. Help us to, to uh, clean up our lives. And um, I just really do pray that you would help us to have the courage to stand against the wiles of the devil and to speak out against these things no matter what it costs us. And if we have to lose friends or family or even jobs, um, I pray that we would stay faithful. And uh, if uh, any man out there is, is thinking about getting into ministry, I pray, Lord, that, <clears throat> that you would under, help him understand his, his need for being faithful. And uh, parents out there have children that are unruly and, and bad. I pray that they would work their hardest to get those children to be faithful and, and good and, and obedient children. And I just pray, Lord, that... Uh, you would help us now with our time of fellowship here that um, we would ask good questions and, and uh, give me the answers, Lord, that I can help people with. And, and if I can't answer them, I pray that they would uh, search out the matter with you, Lord, and, and that you would give them the answer. And I just ask it all in Jesus name. Amen. OK. So. All right, now you can do your questions. Try to do my best today. I'm, like I said, I'm a little bit uh, out of it. So <laughs> have mercy on me here. Okay. Any questions? Question, what do you think about natural, naturopathic doctors? Um, you have to, to search it out. A lot of times you're going to find that these guys will get into um, some new agey type beliefs and things. So, you, you know, you be careful with some of it. If they're recommending herbs or nutritional health, listen to that. Try it out. See if it works. If they get into, you know, we all have a uh, essence and a spirit, you know, and all watch out for some of that stuff so i would recommend some of them but just be careful with what they're saying question what exactly is ministry like is preaching witnessing a type of ministry aren't all saved people supposed to be ministers just a little confused yeah um the ministry of reconciliation is there for all christians certainly but what i would what i'm talking about you know um the thing of full-time ministry i'm talking about an actual preaching and teaching ministry um, you know, I've done it in church buildings where it's a quote unquote local fellowship. I've done it in house churches. Um, again, I didn't just show up on YouTube just out of the blue. I've been in church buildings and, and things like that. Um, used to go door to door, knocking on doors. Hello, you know, we're out here today to talk to people about salvation. And, if, you know, I do the whole thing. Um, I've preached on the street. Yeah, I've, I've done a lot of that stuff. So, um, you know, there's there's times there's there's time that you need to go through before you're really ready for full-time ministry. Um, so do you believe what Living Waters preach on YouTube with Ray Comfort? I've uh, been asked this question before. Ray Comfort, um, I like some of what he says, but he his problem is he doesn't have, he doesn't have, a, um, he doesn't have a standard in the King James Bible. So, you know, when he, Deals with a false convert, he just does, you know, switch over to Lordship Salvation. You have to be sinlessly perfect. That's the main issue I have with him. And there's other things too I could get into, but um, non-related question. Early evidence for 1 John 5 7. It was quoted by a lot of the early church fathers, which 
I don't think much of the church fathers, but the point is they quoted the verse, so it's there. Um, manuscript evidence, there's not a whole lot of early manuscript evidence for 1 John 5, 7. They call it the Johannine comma, um, but you can study it. Um, uh, Jack, Dr. Jack Mormon has a book uh, about uh, um, 1 John 5, 7. Normally it would be here on my shelf behind me, but it's not here yet, so I can't really show that. Um, my brother uses the NIV and is going to... Uh, going to a university to get a master's in divinity. I believe he is truly saved. What should I do if anything? Well, if he's using the NIV um, and Hates the King James Bible then no, he's not saved. I'll tell you that because I used to be an NIV user myself um, The NIV is a false Bible if he's open to hearing about it being a false Bible. Well, maybe he's just confused on the matter But I'd be careful of that and if he's going to a university, he's just gonna come out messed up um Question, why did Jesus tell Nicodemus to be born again if he hadn't died on the cross yet? Well, he's telling him something about coming in the future. Um, he's not saying you have to be born again right now. He's saying, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And he's saying you must be born again. And he doesn't understand him and things. You know, get that from the context. Um, should Christians learn martial arts, MMA, wrestling? Uh, well, I would say no because that stuff is based around pride. Um, I don't really think that that's a, a good idea, honestly. Martial arts, there's some occultism stuff in with it. Get into some of like the ninjutsu and stuff. There's some weird occult stuff, you know, energy forces and whatnot. So I'd, I would stay away from that stuff. Um, and it, it's a very fleshly thing, you know, wrestling and bodybuilding and you're you know, looking at your muscles in the mirror and look at me, I can beat people up. I don't think it's a good idea. Um, question, can I get spiritual attack because of tattoos? I got peace tattoo on my right hand. Should I remove this with laser operation? Because this way is not healthy. Um, I wish that there was a way to get rid of the whole thing of tattoos naturally. Excuse me, naturally through some kind of um, essential oils or some kind of herbal thing or whatever else. Um, I'd love to find something like that. I think it'd be very helpful to people. Um you know, um, something I've often thought about, but, you know, it's, tattoos are, are, it's something that I think, you know, you just, you just have to ask the Lord's forgiveness and say, Lord, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that, you know, and, and whatever else, as far as being some kind of a doorway to, you know, devils and whatever else. Well, that's if, you're, if it's unconfessed and you're just keeping it there and you don't really want to admit, hey, this was wrong for me to do that. Um if you have something occult, like a little idol around your house or some kind of like a dream catcher or some of this other stuff, and it's just there and, oh, it's not a big deal. Well, then it's a doorway for devils. But if it's something that you know is wrong, then no, it's not, it's not going to be a problem. Um, is IT field coding software developing apps, websites, a job for a Christian? Um that's kind of a hard question for me to answer because it could get into a lot of different things. What are you building? What websites are you building? Are you, somebody comes to you and wants a bad website made or, you, you know, well, my job forces me to build this for them and whatever. You know, I would say if you're able to do it for Christians, then no, I, I don't think it'd be a problem, you know, um, at all. But uh, if you're having to deal with a lot of lost people and you're building lost wicked websites, then yeah. Um, Question, do you think that he, that as a preacher doesn't speak against the Jesuits, that they are a coadjutor? A preacher I used to listen to speaks against the New Age, occultism, New World Order, but not Jesuits. Well, uh, again, that depends on the situation. I can't answer that because uh, it could be that they've never heard about it. But if they're purposefully not ever mentioning it, and if it's brought up and they just kind of, oh, yeah, well, you know, that, that, that's there, but you know, yeah, whatever, you know, um, that's a problem. I knew a pastor in Pennsylvania that actually had met Eric Phelps and he just was kind of met, making fun of Eric Phelps behind his back. Eric Phelps is the guy of Vatican assassins. He speaks out probably more than anybody else on the Jesuit issue. Um, yeah, there's a problem there. Um, I would say if the guy's ignorant, okay, you know, he can learn and whatever else I've seen that happen, but uh, just be careful with that. Um, 
what would you recommend to a teenager? Um, in what way? I'm not sure on that one. Um, get saved, you know, if they're in their, if they understand salvation and things, get saved, get a King James Bible, get away from public school, um, stay away from a lot of junk food, um, get away from video games, don't go to movies, don't mess around with the, the modern rock music, that stuff just mess you up. Um, question, not related question, but what is the Bible, what does the Bible say about visiting the loved one's grave? Is it okay with the Lord? Well, what's the point of visiting their grave? Um, they're not there. If they're saved, then they're with the Lord. If they're, if they died in their sins and they're lost, well then their body, you know, their soul is in hell. Their body's there in the grave, but their soul's in hell. Um, there's really not anything about visiting somebody's grave. Question, how will we know what the mark of the beast is? Uh, well, if you're saved, if you're born again, you won't because we won't be here for it. Uh, lost people, it'll be required for buying and selling. Now, they might actually try to do that before the Antichrist shows up. Okay, remember the, the mark of the beast is three, is the, I should say the mark of the beast is there to control buying and selling. But what people get damned to hell for in Revelation 14 is taking the mark, worshiping the beast and his image. Now, they might try to implement a mark, so to speak, uh, have you had the vaccine or whatever else? They might try to implement that before the Antichrist shows up. But the thing that damns you to hell is taking the mark, worshiping the beast and his image. So you don't have to worry about it as a Christian because we're out of here before the Antichrist is unleashed. Um, question, what do you think about Walter Veith? He has some good le lectures on the Jesuits and secret societies that were good. But I saw his testimony and he didn't mention the gospel or repentance once. Yeah, I, I don't trust him. I don't trust him. I'm not going to say he's a Jesuit or whatever else, but I don't trust the guy. He's a kind of radical vegetarian, and and I don't trust him. Um, comment. If you want a good reference about face masks in the Bible, look at Leviticus 13.45. In fact, look at the whole chapter of Leviticus 13. Notice who is talking, who is wearing masks, and why. Yeah, good point. Um, can women be pastors? No, they can't. Um, First, let me give you the scriptures on that. First Corinthians chapter 14. I don't want to just say no, they can't and skip on to the next question because I need to give you the scriptures. First Corinthians chapter 14 in the King James Bible. Um, verse 34, let your women keep silence in the churches for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience as also saith the law. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for women to speak in the church. Okay, and you have that. And then you go to 1 Timothy chapter 2. <clears throat> 1 Timothy chapter 2, um, verse 11. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. Okay. They have the second thing there. And then chapter 3 of 1 Timothy, this is a true saying, if a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife. Uh, I don't think women can be husbands of wives. So, Question, when a child dies or during the rapture, will they stay as small children or do they become as adults? Uh, good question. Um, I don't know on that one. I would say that they would probably be um, you know, maybe the age of an angel or something like that. Um, you know, I can't say on that. That's just a theory. The Bible doesn't really say exactly what they're going to be like. But good question. Um, question is repent for salvation, a change of mind. Well, it's a, it's a number of things. Repent means when you repent of something, you're, you are changing your mind about the sin that you've committed. You no longer look at it as a well, whatever, you know, it grieves you that you sin against God. But it's also because you understand it's, it's a sin against God, you also want to change your actions. It isn't just going from unbelief to belief or something. No, there's I'm a, I'm a sinner. I am not going to make it into heaven. And this sin has has put separation between me and God. And I need to stop that. And I need to ask for God's forgiveness. That's what repent means. 
Um, question. What is the method of stopping profanity and confessing sins to the Lord? Do you have to confess face to face with another Christian or no? Um, no. The only time that you talk to another Christian is if you, if you've, uh, you know, trespassed against them, if you've sinned against them, confessing your faults one to another, and say, hey, you know what? I was really rude to you, to you the other day, or I was very prideful, and I'm sorry about that. Um, but you don't have to go to another, like a priest or whatever else, and forgive me, Father, for I've sinned. And yeah. Uh, no, but as far as stopping profanity, um, you know, it's when you get saved, when you get born again, the Holy Spirit comes in and he'll clean up your speech. And again, if you are, you know, evil communications corrupt good manners, the Bible says. So if you're listening to a lot of Hollywood movies, if you're listening to a lot of profanity, garbage in, garbage out. Okay, very simple. Um, get in the word of God. You listen to the right kind of music, whatever else, and it'll clean up your speech. Get away from, you know, movies and things like that. Uh, let's see here. Question. How can I overcome pornography? I lost my first love and marriage over it. What Bible scripture would help me? I've been struggling with this since leaving the army in Afghanistan in 07. Um, I did a whole, I did a series of videos on that, um, the pornography epidemic. Um, can't think of the other one I did on pornography, but, uh, uh I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. Um, I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. Psalm 101 verse three. I have it actually right up here on, on the top of my, I have it printed out and taped to the top of my computer monitor. Um, and just, you know. I had that, I put that on there many years ago, back when I used to struggle with pornography. And I would always look up there and I would think about that. And I just quote that. Um, there's a lot of scriptures, you know, um, um, abstain from all appearance of evil, you know, flee fornication. Uh, there's there's a lot of different scriptures on the thing of sexual sins. And you, rem you memorize those sins or you have a paper and uh, you start to get to that temptation to look at pornography and you get that scripture out and you just start to read those scriptures aloud. Um, and listen to the right kind of music, get a hymn book, start singing hymns, and you'll feel your lust go down. Um, you mess around with rock music, it feeds the flesh. It makes fighting pornography almost impossible. Um, question, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8. Why does Paul say prophecies shall fail? Um, if Lord speaks, must he not do it? Or is it because what is spoken by him may be misunderstood in terms of timing, etc.? Yeah, I would say the second part. But let's go to the verse here. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8. First Corinthians 13, verse 8. Charity never faileth, but whether there be whether there be prophecies, they shall fail, whether there be tongues. They shall cease, whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Yeah, I mean, you could technically prophesy somebody something to somebody and they would forget about it. And it would happen and they would just kind of forget the thing and whatever else. Um, yeah, that's how I would say that. But charity never faileth. I mean, you could, you could prophesy somebody something to somebody and be kind of a jerk about it. But if you're kind to them and you have charity, well, that'll never fail. I think what Paul's trying to say there. Um, would ham radio be a good tool to fellowship with brethren if you know how to use it um, I think there's some uh, licensing and stuff that you have to go through with that so that's up to you um, question I'm Polish and I don't speak much English how can I determine which version of the Polish Bible to use should I compare the verses with the King James Version yes you should um, again, the, the, the King James Bible, when it was translated, the translators actually would take foreign language translations and they would read along. You know, they would have a guy up there reading the translation that they had just done in the authorized version, which was what this was originally called. And um, King James Version is just kind of a nickname that was picked up over the years. Now, most people call it the authorized version, the King James Version. But they literally, I, I remember reading of the translators. They had seven different 
you know, foreign language translations, and then one of them would stand up there, like an eighth man would stand up there, and he would read their translation, and these translators would follow along in, you know, Luther's Heilige Schrift or or the French, I think, Diodati, I think it was what it's called, and they would read along, and they would be hearing it in English and translating in their mind and saying, you know, matching things up. So the King James translators did it with other foreign language translations and you can do it with the King James Bible. So can you explain Revelation 6, 9 and 9, 4? Well, we'll go there. Revelation chapter 6, verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And Revelation 9, verse 4. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Well, there's a lot of people that uh, are not saved right now. Um, they don't have pleasure in un unrighteousness. Um, so they don't fall into Second Thessalonians chapter two that condemnation, but there's a lot of people that are just not saved and they don't know everything about the truth and whatever. They're just you know the the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches are kind of there and whatever else. But in the time of Jacob's trouble, after the catching up, they're going to get real serious about the Word of God. And you have these modern churches and these Christ modern modern churches and these Christians. No modern Christians in these churches that uh, they don't know about the King James Bible issue and whatever else. And catching up happens and they realize, oh, these people, these King James only people, they're going to get real fervent for the word of God. That's why Revelation 6 verse 9 says about how that they were slain for the word of God and for the tes testimony which they held. They wouldn't do it right now. They wouldn't be slain for the King James Bible, but they will in the future. So you have these people that are that are there and they, you know, that are lost right now. They're not genuinely saved. Catching up happens, and they're going to get real fervent for the Lord, and they'll die for the Lord at that time. Okay. Um, well, why are there a few times in the New Testament where Jesus' words are recorded in both English and Hebrew? For example, Matthew 27, 46. Mark 5.41. Um, I think I have that. Lama la, 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 Sabachthani, I think. Um, 27.46, and just make sure there. Yeah. Eli, Eli, Lama Sabachthani. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. There's some kind of significance to that. Um, and I get, you know, the Mark 5.41 is a similar thing there. So I don't know. Good question. Um, question, do you know the age of accountability for kids being raptured or not? No, I don't. It's going to be different for different children. It's when they mature and get to the point where they understand uh, salvation or need for salvation. Um, I did watch it a little bit. I'm just reading your comment over here. I, um about watching the the study yet and, and everything i did watch a little bit of it but it was one of those things i was just oh yeah i wanted to watch that and i saw a little bit didn't get to see everything yet so um i'll have to get back to you on that one um question uh when looking for fellowship with like-minded believers to what extent or or at what point do we cross the line for making confessions or concessions excuse me um Music, eschatology, public school for children. Uh, if you sense an ignorance there, that they're not really sure about certain things, and I, I don't know, that's an interesting question, you know. Well, then I would say, you know, fellowship with them and just say, well, you know, what I believe is, like, I show you the scriptures. And if there's a there's a reception to that, you know, um, you have Apollos in the in the book of Acts, and Aquila and Priscilla, you know, they hear him and he's and he's up there preaching the baptism of 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 John and you know and they take him unto him and they expounded him the way of you know the Lord more perfectly so they didn't just say well he's preaching the baptism of John so 
forget him. No, he, hey, come here. We want to talk to you about this stuff. So um, I would say if there's a willingness for them to change and learn and they there's an openness there, then yeah, continue talking to them. But as soon as you start to see the, hey, you know, oh, oh well, I don't know. And they start to get the nervousness. Okay. You know, bye-bye. If the Lord is going to catch us up before the mark of the beast, can he do it before we are forced to be vaccinated? Well, um, if the Lord is going to catch us up before the mark of the beast, can he do it before Christians go through the Great Depression? Well, that's right. They went through the Great Depression. Could he do it before, um, you know, World War One, World War II, uh, Vietnam, Korea, uh, you know, whatever? Uh, we're not promised to get out of bad times. And that's all I'm saying. Just. Prepare yourself. Be ready to go through it. Be Remember to be found faithful. That's all I'm saying. Hopefully the Lord will get us out of here before the vaccination thing. That would be great. Wonderful. I'm not going to fight that one. Um, but don't just, you know, we'll, we'll be out of here before it happens. So don't worry about it. You know, the, the vaccine is not the mark of the beast. Okay. I, I don't believe it is because it's not going to control buying and selling per se. It's not an implantable microchip. You know, that's not a mark, so to speak. Um, but it's leading the way into that and it could be setting it up. So I'm not getting a vaccine. Simple as that. Um, Psalm 12, one through four is a great, is great for the study and what we see in this world today with the lost and false brethren. Well, let's read that Psalm 12, one through four help Lord for the godly man ceaseth for the faithful. Good one. Faithful fail from among the children of men. They speak vanity, every one with their with his neighbor. With flattering lips and with a double heart do they speak. The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaketh proud things. Who have said, with our tongue will we prevail, our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? Very good, Brother Philip. That's an excellent scripture. And, you know, let me just say this to kind of line up with what Philip just said there. And that is, you know, it's okay to have questions and whatever else. but um, you know, I'm going to try to be you know good as far as getting the, the title of the sermon, what we're going to be talking about on Sunday mornings, try to get it out there early. Look up some of the verses on your own and say, hey, you know, I, we're going to be doing a study on, you know, faithful, called to be faithful and things. Um, wonder what the Bible says about faithful. Don't just count on me to do the study and whatever. And, you know, hey, brother, um, I did a lot of study in found same, some of the same verses as you, but the Lord showed me this one too, like that one right there. That would have been a good one for the study. So, you know, it's good to stay on, on topic with what we're talking about. Um, will there be marriage during the thousand year reign? I believe so. Um, you can't tell me that for a thousand years, nobody's going to, I mean, how are they going to, you know, get, you know, have children and things? Uh, of course, it'll be marriage. Um, another good verse there. Psalm 31, verse 23. I love the Lord, all ye his saints, for the Lord preserveth the faithful and plentifully about rewardeth the proud uh, doer. In other words, he rewards the proud doer with what they deserve. But yeah, another good verse. Um, question, are, I think you mean, are our souls in heaven before we are born? Um, I think the Lord creates you when the Lord forms you in the womb is when you receive the soul. Is what I would say to that. Uh, when is the rapture? Um, before the, you know, the proper term is called the catching up, and it happens before the time of Jacob's trouble starts. And as far as the timing of that, um, you know, nobody really knows. You, you can't know that timing. So, all right, let's continue down through here.
Question, I see no problem for a teenager dropping school, but where does he go from there? Is your experience low money underage for job? Um, well, you know, I think that, you know, again, it's it's a, one of the problems that, that we have in our modern society. In the past, you know, a young man could go out and if he had enough um, ambition, he could go to a job or an employer and say, I want to work for you, you know, and, and whatever. I mean, there are stories of young people, you know, that, have, you know, they'll travel to Alaska and work at a logging on a logging crew or out west and work with, you know, uh, ranchers and whatever else. I mean, people are just, you know, losing their creativity. Young people that are raised on video games are not very creative, unfortunately. Okay, see some more questions here. Um, a faithful witness will not lie, but a false witness will utter lies. Another good scripture that lines up with the study. There was a lot of scriptures I could have gone over, but I, you know, when I prepared, I just thought I want to hit those. But yeah, so many scriptures on this on this issue. Question, what should one do when they make face masks mandatory by law and start charging fines for not wearing one in public? Please pray for me. Well, the more people stand against it, the more, you know, it's, the system is going to fail at that. Um, and use it as an opportunity to witness for the Lord and just say, I, I can't wear one. Why? Well, it goes against my beliefs as a Christian and bring the Lord into it. I'm trying to catch up here. Um, question. Could you please explain Jeremiah 7.16 and John 17.9? Uh, okay, let's go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah 7.16. Therefore pray not thou for this people, neither lift up cry nor prayer for them, Neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. Okay, and John 17, 9. Keep my hand there. John 17, verse 9. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. Um, yeah, I think what's going on there is when people get to a certain point of just being so wicked and so evil, just don't even bother praying for them anymore. You know, that's what people, let's let's pray for America to be turned back. It's not going to happen. Um, it's just too far gone. So pray for each other um, as Christians in the body of Christ. And when it gets to a point, and, and see, we're getting to this point now, and this is something I struggle with where, you know, it's it's kind of a how long do we stay in the system and try to witness to people when the people just do not care at all. And, you know, that's why, you know, I believe the Lord brought us here, you know, and, and we're trying to say, hey, you know what? Um, we might have to get away from the system of going to grocery stores and whatever else. And, uh, you know, I mean, when it comes to, to your service for the Lord as a Christian, you can go out as a martyr or you can hide, uh, basically. You see that throughout the Old Testament. Um, you read it about it in Hebrews, the book of Hebrews there, about the you know different people that were faithful. Um, if you can't get out of the city, um, you're probably going to get killed for the Lord and you're, you'll die for the Lord and be faithful unto death. Sure. But there have been Christians down through the centuries that have gotten away from the cities, that have gotten away from the system. And they are just as faithful to the Lord. It's not that they're running away from problems. It's just that they're saying, I'm not going to pray for the wickedness and whatever else. I don't want any part of it. I'm going to get out here. I'm going to live for the Lord and do what I can to serve Jesus Christ. So you see that in the New Testament. You see it throughout church history. There were people that were martyred for Jesus Christ. There were others that, that survived. But it, when a nation gets so wicked that there is no... 
you know, um, there's no turning back, then I would say you stop praying for him at that point in time. And you do what Jesus Christ said, uh, hey, I'm going to pray for my brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, let's see what we what does the Lord want us to do? Um, so I hope that answers your question. Um, question, what can one do if he can't control his emotions even when he's he sees it's wrong or not appropriate? Um, you have to pray about that. If they're saved, the Lord can help them. Um, if they're not saved, well, then there's not really any help from the Lord on that. But, uh, you know, getting control of your emotions, there's, there's a lot involved in that. Um, being born again is the most important thing. But then just what's your prayer life like? How much are you reading the Bible? Are you listening to the wrong kind of music? The wrong kind of music can make you very emotional. Um, so you have to be careful of that. What's your entertainment? Another thing that can make you very emotional. So, um, How do I gain true repentance? Can I do that myself, or is it solely from the Holy Spirit? Well, if the Holy Spirit's convicting you about sin, then uh, you know true repentance is not some kind of a thing that you get to or whatever else when the Holy Spirit forces you to it. No, it's just you're a sinner. You know what sins your sins are. You don't need to tell me. You don't need to tell some other preacher or whatever else. You know what your sins are. The Holy Spirit will convict you of those sins and realize I'm not going to make it into heaven with my own good works or whatever else. If I have one sin in my life, I'm qualified for the lake of fire for all of eternity. Um, but your sin also qualifies you to be saved. When you understand, hey, I'm a sinner. It is a faithful saying worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief, Paul says. I'm a sinner. That qualifies me to be saved. Jesus died for sinners on the cross. He paid for my sins. So I'm not going to be good enough to get there. I need to say, God, I know I'm rotten. I know where I've messed up. I'm sorry. I don't want to live like this anymore. I want you to change my life. And I know that Jesus died on the cross to pay for my sins. I believe, Lord, that he, I, I trust that those, that death, that blood that he shed is enough to pay for those sins, to take my sins away. God, please save me. I'm not. I can't save myself, Lord, so please save me. Call out to the Lord as a sinner like that. And uh, it's between you and him. You could fake all that and uh, just pretend and whatever else. But if you truly mean it, if you're truly wanting to be saved, you know, that's between you and God. I can't do that. You say, well, preacher, could you pray for me? My prayers won't mean anything. I could pray for you from now till the day I die, and you can still go to hell. It's between you and God. So... Question, do you believe in leaving gospel tracks at bus stops for people in the morning can be considered another form of witnessing? Yes, I do. I do. Um, you know, gospel tracks don't don't replace the thing of somebody hearing the word of God, hearing the gospel, but it's a good start. It's something that that uh, they can get started on that and then that will that can lead them into other hey, I need to know more about this. So I'm not against gospel tracks. I know some people are, but I'm not. Um, question, Brenda Weltner teaches that the Revelation 12 sign that happened in 2017 was the start of the tribulation. Is there any way to know if this is true? Um, well, first of all, Brenda shouldn't be teaching. Um, that's, I suffer not a woman to teach, nor do, nor do you usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. That's problem number one. Number two, uh, there is no Revelation 12 sign in terms of an astrological, you know, uh, some kind of a constellation or whatever else. No, it's an actual woman in heaven, you know, that, that John sees. Okay, it's not a constellation. So, no, it didn't happen. And, and also, uh, where's the Antichrist? The body of Christ is still here, so you can tell that that's a lie from the very beginning.
Question, for married believers, does God let us choose how many children to have or not? Um, well, you know, if you're trying to have children, you know, a lot of times that'll happen, but there's there's couples that uh, they have one child and um, that's all that they have. No matter how many times they try or whatever else or how much, you know, whatever, the Lord just simply says, hey, one child and that's it. So um, it is ultimately up to the Lord. How many children you have? Um, is it possible to be possessed by demons and, and be aware of it? What can one do about it? Um, no, it's not possible. If you're saved, if you're born again, I don't believe it's possible to be, you know, possessed by demons. There's a thing of op op the oppression, <laughs> where you have some bad things and occult stuff in your life, and the, and the the devils can kind of mess with you as a result, but getting inside you no you're a purchased possession um the holy spirit's there no um so no there's nothing to worry about there question is it okay to listen uh to music with natural instruments without heavy rhythm and lyrics um yeah yeah i think so I don't, I don't see a problem with that as long as it's not a fleshly type of music. Um, do you think cryptocurrency will be the currency tied to the mark of the beast? Well, ultimately, yes, um, I do. It's, it has to go to digital cash. Yeah. Question, how long is a generation when it says this generation shall not pass? If it's 100 years, do you think that means that the rapture must happen no later than 2048? Different theories on that. Some say 20 years, 40 years, 60 years, 80 years, 100 years. I've heard lots of different ones. Um, I don't know. But I would say I don't think it's going to go much because, you, you know, you could say that the, the generation that's born in 1948, that they wouldn't all pass away um, before all things are fulfilled. Well, what if you have a Jew that was born that uh, in 1948 and they lived to be 104 years old or 105 years old or something or 110? They didn't all pass away, you know. Um, so I don't know. It'll happen, you know, at some point in time. but. To get real close to the timing, I don't think the Lord wants us to know that. Um, are Gentiles the bride of Christ or the body of Christ? Um, well, Gentiles and, and Jews, there's there's neither Jew nor Gentile in the body of Christ. We're all one. So the body of Christ is both body and bride. So Because uh, a bride, when she joins her body with her husband, then they're one flesh. So you can be the body of Christ and the bride of Christ at the same time. Um, question. Why should we fight the Antichrist systems such as the advancement of the mark of the beast when we know we can't receive it and that all of it must come to pass before Jesus returns? Good question. Um, I'll give you the scripture on that. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Um, Paul writing to the, Thessalon the believers in Thessalonica about the... Antichrist showing up and he says verse 6 and now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time For the mystery of iniquity doth already work only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way And then shall that wicked be revealed um, We're supposed to hinder that's what the word let means there. We're supposed to fight that Antichrist system um, You know we need to leave a testimony behind um, That we were against all this stuff. So uh, we won't be here for it, but we need to fight it. We're supposed to be continually letting, hindering the system, saying no to face masks, saying no to anything having to do with your body, 
government telling you to do what to do with your body because ultimately that is what the mark of the beast system is it's it's the antichrist telling you what to do with your body um that's the problem and you know so removing your free will and things by you know causing the mark of the beast to be in somebody question what is our responsibility to the body of christ when you fellowship with a brother that is constantly attacking other brethren with gossip and backbiting is found and is found to be a liar um you know as far as warning people i guess is what you're saying um you know part company with them um you know and uh you know don't don't make a big issue and and things and and cause a lot of of attacking and you know whatever else um i'd be careful about that what are some good places to leave tracks uh bus stops stores um if you can get in there without a face mask on um you know utility bills you can put it in or you get uh people sending you a, a thing for a credit card and it has a self ad addressed stamped envelope you know no postage necessary stick a tract in there and send it back to them that's a good thing to do would you mind if i translated some of your teachings to spanish no that'd be fine as long as you don't change the change what i'm saying that's fine uh Um, uh, question would you recommend R.C. Sproul I have no idea if he uses the King James Bible I would say maybe but I don't know I don't I don't know that much about him um, I missed this one do you think Joseph Gregory Hallett could be the Antichrist I have no idea I've never heard anything about him um, off topic Topic, are you going to sell or dismantle your old house in Bridge, Bridgewater, <laughs> not Bridgeport? Did the Jeep pass inspection? Did you get security cameras for the new office house? Um, working on the third one there. Uh, we're still kind of working on that. Uh, the Jeep did pass inspection. Everything was fine. It needed a new rear tail light, the one at the top. Um, that was it. And uh, took it in, passed inspection just fine. Uh, unfortunately, our little Chevy Tracker did not. It had too much rust, and so we've lost two vehicles this year. So uh, it's kind of a hard thing. It's, it, you know, it's one of the things that's just so messed up. We're paying taxes for the town to put salt on the road, and the salt destroys our vehicles. So every three or four years, you have to replace your vehicle. So... Hopefully when things get rough, you know, um, uh, you know, with the economy falling apart and whatnot, hopefully that they won't be getting as much tax revenue coming in. So they might reconsider putting salt on the roads, I hope, because it gets rather costly having to replace vehicles every couple of years. So, but as far as the uh, Bridgewater thing, the old office there, um, for now, we're going to be um, tearing it down. We're still trying to get everything out of it. Um, and so we have a few more trips to make. Um, if it's not gonna it's not supposed to rain too much today it's just kind of a little bit cloudy out there but if it's not going to be raining we have we have to unload our vehicle that we brought a lot of stuff down and then we're gonna have to go another trip or two here in the next week or so so um for now we're probably going to be deconstructing it tearing it down using the materials um Um, question how should one as underage get away from the system if people would report you missing and so on um, that's tough you know if you're if you're a minor you might have to just stay in the system where you're at and witness as much as you can until you're old enough to get away um, that's kind of a rough thing there uh, I see a question on contraceptives I'm not going to go into a big thing on that but um, I don't believe contraceptives are right 
So um, I think that you should leave the Lord, um, you know, let the Lord plan your family. You know, especially if you're using uh, birth control pills, they, they, you know, basically abort, you know, a baby. So. Question, is there any good solid evidence that vaccinations contain aborted baby tissue? Um, I'd like to find out so I can use it to convince my family that vaccines are wrong. Um, well, you have to do the research on that. I think it's, was it MCR5 or something like that? Um, I don't remember what it's called, but um, stem cell or whatever else, just, you know, you'd have to do the research on that. Um, What do I think of Rick Wiles' True News? Don't know. I don't really know about that. Um, I know the Bible tells us to obey our government, but where do we draw the line and not obey? Like this, this vaccine coming up in, in mass. I work in healthcare and don't want the vaccine. But when they start telling you to do things with your body, they've overstepped their bounds. They have no right to do that. And you can tell them such. All right. Question. I now believe the Lord wants us to marry within our kindred. I'm mixed. I showed my mom the scriptures. She said it makes sense, but asked, why does it matter? Uh, how should I answer? Um, well, when you see um, Paul talking about um, Timothy and he says about how he has to take Timothy and, and um, circumcise him because of the Jews, it's well reported among the Jews. It becomes a testimony issue. Um, you know, being mixed, if you, if you go and, and you, Go around certain people they're going to hate you you know if you're half black half white we get around some blacks they they aren't going to accept you as being a black person you get around whites they won't accept you as being white so that's the problem there um you meet somebody else who's mixed well okay you get married and you just say all right lord use me for whatever you want um you know and, and that's the thing there it's about god god created culture god created language god wants distinction that's the whole issue there um, Acts chapter 17, we're all of one blood, but God has set boundaries, proper boundaries to keep us separate because when everybody comes together and blends their cultures, you start to get this kind of a new agey, we're all one, you know, let's not make differences. That's the problem. Um, when we have different culture, it's it's a beautiful thing. It's, it's something that is very special to the Lord and uh, he actually restores it in the future, in eternity. So um, that's why it's important. Um, so, but anyhow, that's going to be it for the questions today. It's afternoon here. Um, so, um, so I guess, uh, we'll just, uh, we'll end here. Thank you to everybody for coming along. Not sure what next week's study is going to be yet. Um, but just, uh, pray for us, um, that, uh, uh, the Lord just gives me strength because I have a lot of work to do here. Um, as far as our garage out there and, and whatever else, tearing that thing down, I have no idea how I'm even going to do that yet. I have to repair the the one roof out here. I'm going to be trying to do that. Um, we have a lot of work to do. So, um, and just just the Lord would give me wisdom through this whole time because it it is uh, it's not easy. Um, trying to advise people and you know, I can't I cannot advise you if I don't do it myself So that's the other part of it. You know, Paul said I am made all things to all men that I might by all means save some You get into full-time ministry. That's another thing. It's it's kind of a You know, I'm gonna be used of the Lord to, to speak to people and the Lord says, okay Then I'm gonna put you through this and I'm gonna put you through that. I'm gonna put you through financial hard times I'm gonna put you through depression. I'm gonna put you through headaches and sickness I'm going to put you through your relatives turning against you. I'm going to put you through 
And you get put through all this wonderful stuff so that I can tell you about it. So that's why I need your prayers. And um, thank you to everybody out there that supports the ministry as well. We always appreciate that. And um, just pray for direction for the future. I'll just kind of say this. Uh, right now where we're at, um, you know, this right here, I still have a little plastic desk thing. And like I said, I got the desk here on the floor behind me. I have to build a base for it, set it up. I'm going to set up the bookshelves here. I'm going to have another shelf, shelving unit. Uh, see if I can turn my hand right there. Do it that way. And then I'm going to have shelves over here. And I'm going to have some other stuff here. And I, I really want to have this place organized. Then I have to organize an office for my wife for the work that she does helping me and, and whatever. We're also going to be homeschooling um, Oliver uh, this year, getting into more teaching him, you know. Um, he's getting to that age now where we need to start teaching him. And he, he's really already learning. He can count uh, up one to 20 very quickly. And he's learning to count up to 50 um, already. And, and he can he can spell a couple different words and he knows different letters and things. So, you know, he's he's looking like he definitely needs to be taught now. So we're trying to get into that. Um, but as far as the ministry is concerned, I, I want to start to try to get away from YouTube more and more as time goes by because the censorship here is just ridiculous. Um, we are looking into um, a, I think it's called a CDN, the possibility of a CDN. It's a, um, uh, I cannot think of how that, what that thing is, something network. Uh, it's about basically that I could have a video player on my website pay for it and i could stream from king james video ministries.com it's not youtube it's not anything else it's a service that i pay for and i can say whatever i want to say and not have youtube you know constantly cutting my views down and playing little games with my channel so we're praying about that i'm also praying about um getting the uh you know um getting uh, the the all the connections and everything else that I can hook up my actual video camera on a tripod and I'll be eventually standing over here in front of the bookshelf bookshelf um, and better video better audio for the live streams uh, we'll see that about that too um, so uh, just looked over here and saw this you know um, Question, what kind of phone communication do you use if you are off grid with no cell phone? We don't have a phone. Um, we have one here at the office. Um, and, you know, I can make calls and whatever. It's just a regular landline phone. Um, but we have no cell phone. We go up to our property and nobody calls us. Nobody listens in on us. Sorry, they're NSA. <laughs> um, but it's, it's a wonderful thing uh, just to be away from telephones. We go out into the woods. We go out hiking and you know driving around the back roads we have no cell phone it's always the way it was in the past but you know people are thinking it's so important so whatever um whoop. uh are you looking into that yourself brian we are as much as we can like i said right now we're kind of a little bit you know we have a lot of this stuff to do here but we're we're trying to look into it but you know if we could set something up i saw one service i think that they said you can broadcast up to on up to three different websites so I'd love to be able to broadcast on KingJamesVideoMinistries.com, KingJamesVideoMinistries.org, and maybe some other website or just those two websites. And, you know, the KingJamesVideoMinistries.org, I have not been active over there, and that that bothers me. But I'm always here on YouTube, and YouTube is just, uh, you know. So I'd, I'd really like to be interested, or I'm really interested in this software that I can do live streaming away from YouTube where I won't be censored. And, you know, of course, when that happens, I'll let everybody know about that. So, you know, don't come to YouTube, go to the other website. And um, so anybody with any advice, I would appreciate that. Um, so uh, that's going to be it. And uh, we will see everybody in next week's study. Um, probably, you know, try to do some videos periodically if the lord shows me things too so but please do keep us in your prayers and uh let's pray for one another let's stay in the word and let's remember to be faithful
God's faithful to us. His promises aren't going to change. He's there to protect us. He's faithful to us. Let's be faithful to him. Okay. So we'll see everybody next week. Have a good week.